Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, I'm Corey. This is Steve. We are Track or Die, and today we are going to show you how to change your neck bearings. Set of standard wrenches. Set of torques, you're not gonna need all of these sizes, but just grab out what you have. Set of Allen sockets. 3 8 ratchet, in our case, a half inch drive ratchet. Five millimeter. Inch and a half socket for the stem nut. 15 16 for your front axle. 10 millimeter for your front brake caliper. And this is a special tool we'll cover later for pressing the bearing back on. First things first, front wheel's coming off. Next, off comes the brake. We'll just zip tie this bad boy out of our way. Next, off comes the front fender. Take our pinch bolt off here. All right, we had to break out the big guns. Ha, oh, like butter. There we are. Slide that axle back in there for safekeeping. If your bike has a fairing, now's the time to remove that. Now we're gonna loosen our triple trees. Pull these forks out. Be careful once you break the second one loose. Um, as you'd expect, the front end, the leg could fall out. Now we're gonna pull off our headlight. All right, we're gonna take off this top stem bolt. Nut, guy. When you take this one off, underneath is going to be another one that is actually the adjustment for your steering head. So the bottom tree isn't just gonna fall out yet. Take and lean these back. That's why we went and covered the tank. It's about as much as we're gonna get right there. So now we're gonna remove the stem, the nut that actually holds the stem in. So we have a hammer and a punch in order to do so. When we go to put it back together later, we might have to use a screwdriver if you have a screwdriver, you'll be able to use that as well. So now once this nut is off, you can wiggle the tree out. Out she comes. Ah, oh, shit. We fucked it. What? So if you're like me, you forgot to take the one, hold the brake line off, do that now. Now, we can pull this out. And there you have your lower bearing. The upper bearing stays in the tree. It's underneath this washer here. You can pull that out. Yeah, these guys have seen better days. So, one thing to notice here is a lack of grease. Also, you can see a little bit of rust on the rollers, but also just how loose the cage is. It's just pretty, pretty obvious that these ones just are past their life. So now, if you haven't done this before, you're probably wondering how to get this bearing off as it's press fit. So we need to take this over to the shop press, press the stem out, change the bearing. So hopefully if you're doing this, you know how to use a shop press. Someone just 
decided to powder coat the stem with the stem in. So we're just getting this powder coat out of the way. Make things fit nice. So now we have our new bearings here. We have this, which is a bearing packer. If you don't have one of these, you can do them by hand. Just make sure to get them nice and in the rollers and just get them filled up with grease as best you can. I think these little guys are like five, 10 bucks from Harbor Freight. They're really not much. They do work wonders though. Let's drop this bad boy on here. Get that centered where that taper goes in there. Let's give her a nice push. And then as you can see, forces all the grease up into the needles, which is what you want. Get that all worked on there. Take off any excess you don't need. Just gotta wipe that all around. So now, the, the last time we did this to get the bearing out, we were pressing the stem out of the tree. Now we're gonna be pressing the tree onto the stem. So, we're gonna take our tree, take our stem, insert that first. And then we're going to want to put something underneath it to support it. So now, that tool we spoke of earlier is going to get used. Ours only goes one way. The snap ring at the bottom of your stem is gonna act as a stop, so to speak, but you don't wanna overdo it. You just want it to barely touch. There we are. Stem is in. Now we're ready to put the new bearing on. Make sure you put your lower seal, spacer, whatever it was that you had on first. Then goes your bearing. Now we'll press our bearing on. Pretty sure it's on. We're gonna do the same thing for the top bearing now. So we'll just go ahead and set this back in. Make sure to check your races. In this case, we've checked them and they seem to check out okay. If yours have any pitting or scoring or rust, change them. I feel bad. Look who else decided to show up. Everybody say hi to Ravi. <laughs> Casually late. I start at 10.30. That's true. He does start at 10.30, but it's 10.45. One thing that I didn't cover, because this one doesn't pertain to that, but if your stem has any sort of cut out or anything in it, make sure you put it back the way it came out. If you don't, if you have a steering lock that's in your neck, it's not gonna work. This one has a steering lock here, so it's not really a problem, but some models do have like a cut machine into the stem that pertains to the steering lock. And if you put it in the wrong orientation, your steering lock's not gonna work anymore. So make sure you pay attention to that. We're gonna go ahead and slide this back in. And then just make sure at the top you're gonna have to locate the stem into the upper bearing when you get there. Just go ahead and hold that upper bearing down. Give her a wiggle. Get that guy in there. And then take this with the tapered side up. It's gonna locate in the bottom of the tree. We'll show that later. Now, for now, we're just gonna wanna snug this down. We're gonna have to adjust it a little bit later on. The reason that we put this with the tapered side up, as you can see right here on the tree, fortunately with all the cables, I can't take it off to show you, but there's a taper right here that'll match, kind of locate everything all together. So make sure you do that the right way. Now we're gonna slip the tree back on the top, the stem nut back on but we're gonna wanna leave this semi-loose for the moment. Just snug it down.
always a good idea to dab a little Loctite on there. Yo, what's up guys, we're back. We had to take a little break yesterday. Things got a little bit busy and we had to install a damper kit in this, which you can find at the link on the video. And now it's time to throw these back in. So, a little PSA for you guys. Um, we're finding out on this one that we haven't worked on before, that whoever powder coated these trees decided to powder coat inside of the bores. See how this is all black in here? Not a good sign. You have to take all that out. The tolerances are tight to the point where the forks almost don't want to fit. So you have to go in and remove all of that. So if you go to get your trees done and they give you your trees back like that, make them redo them. So after some considerable sanding, filing, deburring, etc., we're ready to slap these fuckers back in. So now we're ready to set our steering stem. In order to do so, you need to loosen the lower triple tree back up. Make sure that your top nut up here is nice and loose. And now is when the screwdriver and hammer technique that we were talking about is gonna come in handy. Because if Aaron comes around here, you'll see that the little nut has not much room to mess with. So we'll go in from the other side. So when setting the tension on your neck, there's a there's not really a measurement per se, it's more of a feel. And right now we have a decent amount of tension on there with no wheel in there. So we're gonna slap the wheel in and just double check it, what they call the fall away, and we'll go from there. So now that we have at least gotten the steering head adjustment close, tightened up all the forks and everything, we're gonna throw the front wheel on, finish up everything, and then just do one last check on that steering head. Now that the axle's in, we drop some Loctite on here. We're gonna go ahead and put our pinch back in. Don't tighten this yet. And we'll show you why in just a sec. Just get these started, just to help take some pressure off that axle. Leave those hand tight, and I will show you why right now. So the reason that we don't want to tighten that pinch yet is that if you were to tighten the pinch first and then tighten the axle, it's gonna cause the fork legs to bow if they aren't in straight. So what happens is the non-brake side floats. You use a punch, screwdriver, something in the little hole that's machined in there to hold it. While you tighten this down, Everything will get nice and in line, then we'll tighten our pinch. So now that our axle's tight, we'll go ahead and tighten this pinch bolt up. Just make sure that everything with it is all nice and in line. Everything seems happy. So now that the wheel and axle are back in, we're gonna double check our fall away. You can see now that everything moves nice and smooth. There's no crunching, no hanging up, no tightness. Everything's nice and smooth. And then the way we like to set our fall away, it's kind of different to a certain extent, but basically the way we'll set it is if you're in the middle, you get about halfway to the steering stop, it should fall. So we got that side good, and then this side same. And there she goes. So. We're gonna go ahead and cinch everything up and see how it is. So now we're gonna tighten the stem nut. Now we can put our brake back on. Whatever you do, when you have this apart, make sure you do not pull your brake lever or you're gonna be prying the pads back apart to get them on. Friend. 
Now we're gonna put our front fender back on. So that's a bare bones way to change your neck bearings. Get to it. Also, if you like what you see, please comment, like, subscribe, drop us comments as to what other install videos you'd like to see. Um, we'll keep making them if you guys keep watching them. Thanks again. David Sonia Beatstone.